Hi, Daryl from Golden Spiral Media here today with another microphone review for you. Today I'm reviewing the HTDZ HT81 shotgun microphone. Now before I get into my review of the microphone, I want to first tell you about why I selected this microphone and why I decided I needed a shotgun style microphone in my studio so that you can know what my needs are and better understand if what I deem as either success or failure would be the same case for you and your needs. Now I'm starting to do more of these videos uh, instead of just my podcast and so I needed a different style microphone for these videos than I do for my podcast. You know, for my podcast, I use either like right now, this is the Shure SM58. I also have a pair of Heil PR40s and these deliver great sound and give me the, the sound that I'm looking for for my podcasts. But for my videos, especially when you, when you bring the shock mount into play, it covers a lot of my face. And while some of you might think that's a good thing, I don't know, I do want to have a clean view when I'm doing these videos. So the next thing that I did was I purchased a lavalier mic. And this is the Audio-Technica ATR3350 lavalier mic. And honestly, it's been a pretty good mic. It's again, a cheap microphone. So my ex expectations for it were pretty low. You can see the, the microphone here. Now, the, the good thing about this is it's inexpensive. It has a very long cable, so it works really well here in my studio. Now, the bad part of this is that it is an omnidirectional uh, condenser microphone. So the omnidirectional works great for a lavalier because you can pin it to a lavalier and it's going to capture sound all around the person who's using it. You can even turn a lavalier upside down, which is actually useful in some cases, and it'll still pick up all the sound around the speaker. Where that hasn't worked well for me is in my situation. I have a, a very small space here in my studio that's a part of my house. And while you do see some sound dampening foam behind me, and I do have some other pockets of it around my studio, it, uh, it doesn't deliver quite the sound dampening that I would hope. In fact, I purchased that because after I started using the ATR3350, there was so much room echo that it was picking up, I thought I would try to dampen it a little bit with this foam. The foam helped some, but it still didn't give me the sound that I'm looking for. And the other problem with the omnidirectional capsule of the lavalier microphone is that it picks up sound coming from all directions, which means it's more prone to pick up room echo. And I have a clock that's directly facing me on the wall behind the camera and it ticks as a ticking clock, it's not a silent clock. And so that microphone picks up the tick of that clock. So if I'm gonna be using that microphone, I have to take the clock off the wall, pull out the battery, and then when I'm done, reset the clock and all that. It's not a big deal, but it is annoying. So what I decided to do was to see if I might have a better sound if I went with a shotgun style microphone. So because a shotgun microphone is a unidirectional style microphone. It will primarily pick up sound from the direction the microphone is pointed. It will also pick up a little bit of sound from the direction directly behind the microphone, but not as much. It's not as sensitive to the rear as it is to the front. And importantly, it has noise canceling to the sides of the microphone. So I thought that this would be a good test for me, but I wasn't willing to spend a whole lot of money for an experiment. So I began looking to see if they were inexpensive yet good quality or, or good enough quality shotgun microphones out there. And I found the HTDZ HT81 shotgun microphone. And so as I said, all of the audio that you're hearing right now and, and for the entirety of this video is being recorded from the HTDZ HT81 microphone. Right now it is about a foot from my mouth just off camera. And that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping for a microphone that I could keep off of camera and yet deliver good quality sound. And so I'll let you be the judge of the quality of sound that it's producing. But in my tests, I was very pleased with it. Now, I'll do some close-ups of the HTDZ HT81 microphone, but I will tell you, and you'll notice that it will look very, very similar to a couple of other microphones that are out there on the market that are being produced by a couple of other pretty recognizable uh, brand names. One of them is Audio-Technica. They are producing the ATR6550, which looks almost identical to this microphone. The primary difference between this microphone 
and the one that Audio Technica is producing is the one that Audio Te Technica is producing has the cable built in to it. So if there's ever a short in that cable, then the whole microphone assembly needs to be uh, trashed because it's it's not going to be of any use to you anymore. Whereas this one that I'm using from HTDZ, the HT81, has a a connection, an XLR connection with a separate cable. So if the cable ever goes bad or shorts, then you don't have to throw the whole microphone assembly away. That's a big advantage in my opinion. And also the ATR6550 uh, has a at the end of it is a 3.5 millimeter, I believe it's mono, although it could be stereo. But either way, it's an unbalanced connection. So here with an XLR connection from the HTDZ HT81, I can send a balanced connection into my mixer, and that's what I'm doing today. So you're going to get a better quality sound with less interference with the uh, with this type of setup versus the built-in cable that comes with the Audio Technica 6550. Now there's another microphone that Nady is producing that looks identical to this one, in fact, including the separate XLR cable connection, and that is the Nady SGM, I'm assuming that is for shotgun microphone, so the SGM-12, and I have not tried that microphone, I did read some reviews on it, most of those reviews were not good, and so I decided to pass on that microphone. Now here's the other thing I want to point out, this microphone that I'm using, again the HTDZ H T81, I paid, including shipping, $27. And I got it on eBay. Now, you can actually get it cheaper than that. You can find it between $15 and $20, maybe up to $25 on eBay if you get it from an overseas seller, Hong Kong, China, somewhere over there. I purchased mine from a U.S. seller, so I paid a little bit more for that, but I also got it within two days. It might have been three days at the most, uh, and that was worth it to me. To be able to get it quickly, I was willing to spend just a couple of dollars more and also get it from a U.S. seller. But if you want to save even a little bit more money, if you're willing to wait a little bit longer, it could take a week up to a month to get it from overseas, but you can get this microphone even cheaper than what I did. Now there's one other microphone, oh, I'm sorry, let me back up. The ATR6550, again with the built-in hard-wired uh, cable, it runs $55. And the one from Nady, the SGM12, it runs around $30. So this is still cheaper than either of those options. And there is another microphone out there that looks identical to this, again from kind of a no-name brand, and it is the 320E. And there are quite a few uh, reviews and demonstrations on YouTube for that microphone as well. So you can check it out and you can find those anywhere between $15 to $40 depending on the seller and if you find it at the right time. And from what I can tell, it looks like the 320E and the HTDZ uh, HT81 microphone might very well be completely identical, just a different brand on there. So uh, I think you, from the reviews that I found, they're pretty consistent in, in their quality. So again, this is a, this is not an omnidirectional microphone. This is a super unidirectional microphone is what it's being billed as an ultra cardioid polar pattern. And I'll show the polar patterns. And when I get to uh, some later portions of the video, so this is it. You, you've been listening to it the whole time. It has two modes. It has normal mode and tele mode. Right now I have it on tele mode, about a foot from my mouth. And it does have, it comes with a foam wind cover. I've got that on there just in case I have any uh, plosives or popping peas, teas, and, and those sorts of things that could get picked up by the microphone. So I've been very pleased with it so far. I think that as I continue to play with it and, and figure out the best position and how to keep it off of camera, but get it close to my, to my mouth, then I'm going to be very pleased with it. I don't think I would be pleased with this microphone if I were using it in situations probably any more than three feet away or if I were using it outside. But I'm really not the person to, to get the opinion for on that. That is not what I'm using it for. I am really primarily using this for in-studio uses where I can be within two feet from the microphone. However, I might use this in places where I do interviews. Occasionally, I'll go to conferences where I'm interviewing various people in a very noisy environment. And because this has noise canceling from the sides, 
It might be a good application for that, but at the same time, it's about 14 inches long. So it's a little bit big for an environment where I'm at a round table with six people and a person that we're all interviewing simultaneously. And I've got this big 14 inch microphone that's kind of popped down in front of the interviewer so or interviewee. So I don't know that this is really the best mic in that situation either, but it might be something that I'd be willing to take on the road with me to perform those interviews. But for me in studio doing these types of videos, I think this this microphone is going to work out pretty well. And again, at less than $30 shipped, I don't think you can beat a deal like that. So let me change camera positions. I'll show you some up close shots of the microphone and you can get a better idea of what it looks like, what the build quality is like, and what comes in the box. All right, so now as you can see, I've repositioned the HTDZ1 in the, in the camera so that you can get a closer look at the microphone itself. I still have the foam windscreen included on the microphone. I'll remove that here in just a minute so you can get a better look at the capsule. First, I want to show you the packaging that mine arrived in. This is the HT81, and I think some of the packaging might have changed now, but uh, this is the, the way that mine came. So the HTDZ HT81. It also came with it was a, a little a vinyl case with that was foam lined so that the microphone was actually pretty well protected when I got it from uh, the seller. It came with two microphone clips. This one here I'm actually using on the microphone stand right now. It's a standard clip uh, as far as the microphone attachment is concerned and then the, the clip that uh, attaches to the microphone is specifically designed to fit the shotgun style size. Then it also came with this clip here. This is designed to go in a hot shoe. It also has a standard tripod mount in it. And then as you can see here on the end, hopefully you can see that it's a standard hot shoe mount. Of course, it's not uh, wired for hot shoe, but it will mount on a hot shoe mount. And then of course the clip here is designed to fit the shotgun microphone and it does pivot. So that's the, the second clip that came with it. Then the only other thing inside the box besides the foam windscreen and the microphone itself was this cable. Now it came with an XLR on one end and on the other end of the cable is a mono quarter inch cable. And then it also comes with an adapter that is a quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter. Again, a mono ad attachment. Uh, this I don't have any use for. I would not use this. This is not a balanced connection uh, for me. I'm going to be using it in studio with an XLR connection on both ends, and that's what I would recommend that you do as well. Uh, however, if you do have a situation where you need to use this, then I would again suggest probably getting a higher quality cable. The length of the cable that came with this is good in that it gives you a lot of length a lot of room to roam but the longer the cable is the more susceptible it's going to be to, to uh, get interference on the line so i would make another investment and get a higher quality cable if i were going to use this in that in that way and if i'm going to mount it to my camera so uh, for example the uh, dslr that i'm using to record this video on which is a, a panasonic lumix g6 then i would get a smaller xlr to 3.5 millimeter stereo cable a very small one so that it could plug right in very conveniently into my camera without having a lot of extra cable uh, in that connection so that's what i would do um, let's see. I wanted to point out here that it has, again, the off mode and the normal mode and the tele mode. It is still in tele mode right now. Now, I didn't mention how this microphone is powered before in my segment. So this is a condenser microphone and it is required to have power. This portion of the microphone is a screws off. You have to detach the XLR microphone cable to do that. And then once it slides off, there is a spot there for a standard AA battery to power the microphone. And that is what I'm using for this demonstration video. It can also be phantom powered. And if you have a mixer or an audio recorder that will supply phantom power, then that would also work for this microphone. I I have not tested out the phantom power. I don't really use phantom power uh, on my mixer because I have other things hooked into it that don't require phantom power. So I'm perfectly happy using just the uh, AA battery to power the microphone. All right, the last thing I want to do here is pull this off. 
There we go. You could hear that kind of ripple as I pulled it off. You can see here that there are some uh, ridges here along the side of the microphone uh, for noise canceling purposes. And then what I want to do is kind of tilt this toward the, I'm going to, my, my, you, you can tell that as I did that, uh, the, the, my voice changed drastically because it's canceling out as much as it can noise from the side. Now, some of my voice is still coming around here to uh, the front of the microphone. You can tell as I cup my hand around the microphone, that, that hand gesture is directing some of my voice into the front of the microphone and it's picking it up a little bit uh, more clearly. But that'll give you an idea of the noise canceling. If I tilt it down here, you can probably get a better idea of what the grill of the microphone looks like. So there it is. This is my review of the HTDZ HT81. All right, well, there you have it. There's my review of the HTDZ HT81 shotgun microphone. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. If so, please give it a thumbs up and comment, and I would certainly appreciate your support. And I look forward to bringing you other product reviews in the future. If you have any questions about audio equipment or podcasting, feel free to contact me over at daryl at goldenspiralmedia.com. Of course, you can visit my website at goldenspiralmedia.com. There you'll see all of my production services that are available, as well as the equipment that we recommend. So thanks for watching this video and take care.